Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. This time, I will share with you 8 essential add-ons that can elevate your work to a new level. So without any further ado, let us jump into Blender. The GIS add-on is a great tool to handle geodata. It's shipped with Blender, so once you enable it, you will have the GIS icon on the tools shelf. What most people use it for is web geodata, and it goes like this. You select the base map, and a window for Google satellite images will open. After that, Blender will essentially become like Google Earth. And with it, you can zoom in at any location. This can help you take a snapshot on any area you need. Then once you hit the escape key, Blender will save an image with real life scale and all the data in it. Now we can go back to the web geo data and with the second option this time, select all the category and hit OK. This will generate a basic mesh from the image. I did take a small area so the process went smooth, but it can sometimes take a bit more depending on the area you focusing on. This can work as a background for your building if you're working on a specific land. And that's what most people use this add-on for, which can take time to process and you for sure need an internet connection to take the image. The other way I use it for is on topographic files, so I'm just gonna open a CAD file. Those lines represent topographic levels for the land. We did work with this a lot back in architecture school. So what I do is, I select this one object, and convert it from curve to mesh. Then using the GIS add-on, we can go to mesh and select the first option. This way we generate an easy and fast terrain that mimic the real life land we're building on. And it might look funny at the edges, but nothing can't be fixed with some smoothness. The sun position add-on can give you full control over your sunlight. This add-on also is built inside Blender so you don't need to download it. And once you open it, it tells you where the settings are. I did mention this because I get a lot of questions about not finding the settings in the same place as the tutorials, and this depends on the Blender version you operating on. Blender developers tend to change the places around, so just check under any add-on and you can find the settings location. With this one it's in the world settings, open it and you will see a tab for the sun position. In it, we can assign a sun object. After that you can change the latitude, the longitude, and the north offset. You can also set it by global coordinates, or even by the daytime. You can also add keyframes and easily animate any of those settings, and I've been thinking about doing a shot where it's start by day and end by night as a loop, so this one can do it easily for sure. Easy HDRI, as the name says, this add-on can set up your HDRI sky in more easy and fast way. This one is an external add-on so you need to download and install it, links in the description by the way, and you can find the settings for this add-on in the sidebar. Here, you need to assign a folder that contains the HDRI you downloaded online. If you don't have any, you need to watch this video about the essential sites for Blender user, the link should pops up on the top corner, so once I assign a folder, you can see all the HDRI maps here. Then you just need to select one and hit create world node, with this add-on, you don't even need to open the shades editing, 
This can give you control over the rotation, the brightness and background display. The next add-on is also an external one and it's related to the previous two, the sun position and the easy HDRI, it's called HDRI Sun Aligner, the settings can be located in the sidebar, so what this one do is align the HDRI bright area with the sunlight we have, and you have to align them so you don't end up with wrong shadows. So here in the settings, we need to calculate the sun position first, and it might give you this message, the thing here is, the Easy HDRI add-on have two environment textures and one of them is empty, so we just need to assign to it the same sky texture as this top one. Now if we calculate it again, it should work. Then we can select the sun and hit rotate active sun, and it will rotate it to match the sky brightest point. If you want to rotate the sky, the sun will stay in place unless we add a rotation drive. Now you can rotate it in any direction and the sunlight will still match it. The scatter add-on is an awesome tool to distribute objects, it don't have a location so we need to look for it in the search bar, now just to keep it simple, pretend this cube is a rock, a tree, or a grass object, and we need to spread it over this plane which represent a land, what we can do is select the cube first, then the plane, and with F3, we can open the search bar and look for scatter. Once you hit that, the mouse will turn into a brush and you can draw with it over any area you like. After that, you can go here to the active tools setting and adjust the density, the scale and rotation on those instances. Once you done, hit enter to see the result. And here it is. This look like rubble and I think you can do much cooler things with it. The Jarkviz add-on allows you to create architecture elements like floors, windows and roofs, this one is an external add-on and it can be located here under the tools bar, so let me just expand this area to see it more clear, if you're familiar with floor generator in 3ds max or the arch pack add-on in blender, this one is similar to them but with more easy build, so it's just a process of adding the elements and adjusting the numbers to make it fit the area needed, once you hit add flooring, a new object will appear, and the same thing will happen with the other elements, after that you can edit the type, the dimensions, the offset and every other aspect to make it fit the area you need.
The Align tool add-on is built within Blender, this one can do basic aligning operations which can smooth your workflow. So once you find it in the sidebar, you can select a number of objects and align them on any axis and for all transformations. The Render Burst add-on is a helpful tool that can make you render all cameras in your scene, and we do need that a lot more than we think. I do sometimes need to take multiple interior shots with different cameras, and that can take some times which you can spend on any activity rather than staying in front of the laptop, so here we have this small scene with three cameras, to render them all we can select all the cameras in the scene. And if we go into the render settings, we will find a sub tab called render burst. One thing you need to do is assign an output folder for the render process. Once you do that, you can hit this render button. After it finishes, you will find all the render shots in the folder you assigned, and here they are, that's all we have for today guys, stay sharp, goodbye.